Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Father, we come before you at the end of another day to simply say thanks, Lord, for bringing us safely through it. We are aware that on our own we could not have done it, but your grace carries us through each and every day. Now as we come together to sing and praise and listen to your word, we ask that you would put your stamp of approval in whatever we do. And your word would be a word in season, touching each and every one of us who listens. But now we wait and listen for your voice. 
touch us, Lord, and awaken our hearts. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father in heaven, our Lord and Savior, we give you thanks for all the blessings you gave us. Lord, we thank you for food. We thank you for the sun. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the electricity. You have given man the knowledge to develop and know to use the same electricity to spread your word throughout the earth. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, and we ask you to accept our thanks and praise through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 45 to 51. Who then is the faithful and wise slave, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give the other slaves their allowances of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, My master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour that he does not know. 
he will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, O Lord.
Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for the word. May our hearts and minds be open and receptive to it. Amen. The Bible reading drives us to look at our role as faithful and wise slaves of God. In our modern language, we are stewards, members of the royal priesthood, all in service to God. We are called to be stewards with specific tasks. Stewards look after others, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the prisoners, Matthew 25, 31 to 40. Preach the gospel to all the ends of the earth, Matthew 28. We are asked to look after widows in distress, James 1, to name a few. Philippians 2, 5 and 7 tells us that we are to don the stewardship of a servant leader. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who took upon him the form of a servant. A true servant always looks for a way to help and give comfort. When we are appointed as stewards, our Father expresses his confidence and pride in us because he knows that he has equipped us to get the job done. He does not expect anything less than the best. As God's faithful stewards, our interests are met only when the needs of those in our care are met first. Benjamin Franklin said the most acceptable service of God is doing good to man. Treat others as God would treat us. We are required to treat one another fairly and without preferential treatment. In other words, look after the needs of those in our care as with much fervor as our superiors. If the boss gets champagne, you should be concerned if you give your co-workers or less fortunate persons Bobby. Excuses of mistreatment, ignoring or overlooking for the benefit of our superiors will not be tolerated. Take a look at verse 51 again and see the harsh punishment for the unfaithful steward, cut into pieces, and weeping and gnashing of teeth. My brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes we forget that the evil one is always lurking, looking for the cracks and creaks in our minds of laziness, procrastination, inconsistency, pridefulness and lukewarmness in the execution of our stewardship duties. He will find ways to distract us and in worst cases, encourage us to abandon the job. Yes, the task may not be easy. Yes, the task may not be pleasant. Yes, the task may not be so satisfying or rewarding. But we must never grow weary in doing God's work. Be consistent and timely, since we do not know when our Master Jesus Christ will be coming. When plagued with urges to be unfaithful in our deeds or the shirking of our duties, solace will not be found in man's words, but in the word of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the blessings will follow. Our adherence to the pleasures of the world breeds the pollution in our lives, leading to unfaithfulness to God and the failure to perform our stewardship properly, proudly, and purposefully. Faithfulness comes from a place of trust and loyalty. While we want it and expect it from others, it has proven to be an uphill task for many of us. Our God has been and will always be faithful to us. 
We have seen his faithfulness throughout the Bible, especially to the Israelites, released from captivity in Egypt, guiding and providing them with light, food and water throughout the wilderness walk to the promised land. We know the rewards of faithfulness is great. Answers to prayers, having a personal connection with God, the Holy Spirit is our constant companion, and we relish the victory over sin. So why then are we unfaithful stewards? Why do we wrestle with faithlessness to our families, friends, spouses, and to God? The simple truth. We become foolish slaves to self and our self-interests. We confuse stewardship with ownership. We seem not to remember that Jesus told us in Luke chapter 12 verse 15, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. We own nothing. We need to bury this truism deep in our psyche. We own nothing. All that we have has been given to us by God. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5 reminds us that the Almighty will send away stewards who are full of themselves. So my brothers and sisters, beloved, let us critically review our lives and ask, have we been faithful to the things of God, work, church life, spouse? If we believe that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus, how then can we not be faithful to his commands, to the wise and faithful stewardship of his possessions? Faithfulness comes from God and God alone. To be a faithful and wise slave to God means that our stewardship must be a Christ-like way of life an attitude, a motivation for everything that we do. As instructed in Proverbs chapter 27, 17, to help us, we must keep company with like-minded persons. I'm of the opinion that when we resent and avoid the demands of being faithful and wise stewards, or slaves or servants for God, The love of Christ does not dwell in our hearts. It is said that faithful servants never retire. You can retire from your career, but you will never retire from serving God. So be strong. Be faithful. Be wise and steadfast in your stewardship for God. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-living God, we will delight and seize all opportunities to be wise and faithful stewards for you. We know that you have equipped us to complete the task. And when the tempter comes with his delaying and offsetting intrusions, we will immediately rebuke him for we are covered by the blood shed at Calvary, and you are our mighty fortress. Satan cannot and will not prevail over God's faithful stewards. We are fortified and convicted by your promises that we can bring our burdens to you, and you will never leave or forsake us. Thank you for your unchanging promises. And we recommit our lives, our talents, our gifts to the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Faithful one, so
Go now into the world, inspired by the radiant love of God. Live generously with open hands, loving one another as if your lives depended on it. Be good stewards of the gifts you have received, so that God may be glorified in all that you say and do. And may the abundant love of God surround you. May the extravagant grace of Jesus Christ sustain you. And may the constant presence of the Holy Spirit inspire and encourage you in every good deed and in every good word. And now, brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with all of us, now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly. <laughs>